Hi guys, Ian Johnson from DriverSuccess.com. Today I want to talk to you guys about what a lean manufacturing work cell should look like. And I'm standing in my kitchen, you're probably wondering what my kitchen has to do with a lean work cell. And I'm going to get to that in a moment. I just want to basically, you know, reiterate some of the things that I've talked about in the past, some of the things that I've done on the whiteboard. Um, we've talked about, you know, the importance of getting your, your production employees to operate like surgeons. And in this case, you know, we want them to understand that much like a, a doctor operates on a patient, uh, they have to manage time, they have to have all of their resources, they have to have all of their tools in good working order, and they have to be able to basically operate like a surgeon and not waste any time whatsoever trying to, trying to find what they need. Then we looked at things pertaining to how you uh, track uh, cycle time variances um, from one work cell to the next and from one workstation to the next. We talked about design, layout, and analysis, and production throughput analysis. We looked at uh, issues pertaining to product, uh, productivity rates, uh, and we, we talked about how you determine um, mean, mode, and median cycle times instead of just relying upon the average because an average is not a true indication of uh, the cycle times emerging from a given work cell uh, because averages are basically influenced by higher or low um, cycle times within the sample portion. So we've done a lot of these things about you know, setting up a lean work cell, uh, designing it, uh, accounting for obstructions like CNC machines and pillars. But most of the stuff that I've done to date has been you know, on the whiteboard and I've basically gone through what these, things, what these things should look like. But I've never actually taken the time to show you guys or to show anybody what a lean work cell looks like. And this is why I'm standing in my kitchen. Now, the reality is, is that this kitchen, like most kitchens, are designed with a lean concept in mind. So I'm going to show you why this is a lean work cell, and it's actually quite surprising as to why it's so functional. Uh, my, my kitchen is, is a little small, but I love it nonetheless. Um, but this is a perfect example of what a lean work cell should look like. And it's lean because I should never have to leave this location until I finish the work that I've been been tasked with doing, okay? So, very quickly, work is going to flow in here, it's going to move along this process, and it's going to end up right here. So I'm going to go through all the reasons why this is a lean work cell, and just basically get you guys to understand that, yeah, there's a lot of complicated uh, or involved calculations in terms of looking at lean and understanding lean, but the basic concept of lean manufacturing is to minimize downtime, to eliminate, you know, causes of downtime and wasted time and idle time and all these other things and just make it easy. So first of all, right off the bat, this is a very functional space. I've got plenty of space. Um, I'm, not, I'm not cramped. You know, a lot of times companies make the mistake of trying to maximize space. I've got plenty of space and I can move around, okay? So right off the bat, this is where my raw materials are. It's a fridge. Um, but in essence, this is where my raw materials are. When I enter this area, I should not have to leave it at all. Now, this is basically just a 30-day planner. Um, I keep track of, of, uh, of my kids' soccer and piano and stuff like that and different things that we're doing as a family. But this could just as easily be a tact board, okay? And this could be a board that defines, um, you know, scheduled production, actual production and variances. It could be an AutoCAD drawing. It could be a work order or a production schedule. But right away, this is basically an area where the operator can see what has to be done and the amount of demand coming down the system. Okay? So here is the raw material area. Okay? It's a fridge. This can be considered a prep area right here and right here. Okay? This is basically my machinery, which is nothing more than the stove and the oven. I've got a light right here. And then all of these cabinets and these these locations here all have stuff that I might need. Um, there's some knives and forks in here, pots and pans. This has, you know, cups, uh, bowls and dishes. But essentially, I've got everything I need. Raw material, prep, right here. This is my equipment. This is my cleaning station. And this is where everything ends up when I'm finished. Now again, once I enter this area, I should not have to leave unless I have to go to the bathroom or unless I'm called away. Work is going to flow in through here, all the way to here, for the next chain of the process. 
So much like if you're trying to run a can map, okay? When your operators show up in the morning, they should have semi-finished or work in process um, inventory ready to be worked on. And they should be able to do this and have a very functional space. Two people can come in here, but this is ideal for one, okay? So when you look at lean manufacturing, you know, yeah, there's a lot of different calculations and different processes. There's all kinds of things involved in, you know, analyzing cycle times and cycle time variances and mean, mode, and median cycle time. But at the end of the day, a lean work cell is your kitchen, okay? And I, I wanted, this is an example that I use with a lot of my customers, and I get them to think about what lean manufacturing in a lean work cell should look like. It should look exactly like this. Everything I need to perform the task at hand is right here in this area, and I am going to maximize my time, and I'm going to have minimal downtime. I've got instructions, I've got my equipment, my prep, my cleaning station. You know, you could be working with Invar or different uh, exotic materials that are very, very dirty in terms of machining, and I've got my final area where I put my work that's completed and I move it out. So that's it. Ian Johnson, DriverSuccess.com. Bye-bye.